So we had cars, we had robots. Well, the only one that's missing is a drone. So I'm not here to sell you flight racks because it's going to take a while until you see a, a drone flying over London supplying an iPad to a customer. And probably you'll want your iPad delivered by a drone where no one can touch it rather than a, a vehicle that moves on ground. But drones are coming. Uh, it's, it's a need. People can get their goods instead of in an hour, they'll be able to get it in, in less than an hour, in, in a few minutes or so. Uh, people have spoke before me on the market. Uh, today around the world you have more than 25 million parcels going every day all over the world. Most of them weigh less than a kilo. We'll talk about the distance problem. Today drones are not accustomed. They cannot get something from China over here on a drone, but we'll get to that in a few years from now. But just think about the, the sub-markets. Uh, we talked about groceries, think about pharmaceuticals, uh, think about online food ordering. You can get your taco in, in 10 minutes or so delivered directly from uh, that place that you like. So the challenge is moving from same day delivery or even from the Uber way of, of delivery to roughly 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And it will be about location. Uh, the closer you'll be to your customer, the faster it will, be, it will get there. Uh, the plus side of drones is that there's no congestion. You're, no, you're not fighting for your part of the road. Uh, the drone will reach from point A to point B uh, virtually in a straight line, crossing houses, roads, etc. if regulation will, will allow in a few years. Uh, so it's a great challenge, but with that challenge comes an, a, an amazing opportunity of supply and demand really, really fast. And when people today are are used, used to ordering stuff up like the Uber cab and they're angry if it comes in five minutes instead of three. Uh, if you'll be able to supply them the demand for physical goods, you'll see a lot more people ordering online because they'll receive it a lot faster. Uh, we're starting with, with goods. We'll move to people after that. It's vice versa from, uh, from Uber. But who knows, maybe 15, 20 years from now, you'll even see a flight tracks or a similar company delivering people from point A to point B. So the vision is clear, using drones to deliver packages from a point to point. I'll show you how it might look like a few years from now over London or New York, or a year from now in Africa or in Eastern Europe, where the regulation is more open for aerial innovations. It starts with the need, of course. So let's say I woke up at 2 a.m. and I just remembered that I need new toothpaste for tomorrow. It's based on a true story. And so I'll go online, I'll, I'll uh, order my toothpaste. And besides the regular shipping methods, I'll also have the, the sky method of delivery. Uh, next thing, I'll just schedule the, the drone flight. Let's say I want it for it in the morning, or let's say I want it as soon as possible. And I'll just mark my location on a map. We'll talk about the last meter problem near the end, because as you can imagine, I, I can mark a, a skyscraper as my uh, end location or, or a huge tree. It wouldn't work that nice for, for the drone. So we'll talk about where you'll be able to send the drone and where you won't in a, in a few slides. But I'll, for now, I'll just mark my location on a map. Next thing is that the person in the fulfillment center will just grab my toothpaste, put it on a drone, and mark the drone as ready for uh, delivery. Next thing I'll get on my cell phone is a message that my toothpaste is, is being delivered. I'll have to accept that, uh, the, uh, that the drone can take off. It means that I'm waiting for it at my house. I'll be able to receive an ETA, an estimated time of arrival from the drone. And once it arrives next to me, it will wait in the air. We do not see drones, we will not see drones landing near consumers. It's too risky. The propellers are spinning at thousands of rounds per minute. Uh, someone can just grab the drone and take it home, like with a robot. So you'll see drones dropping or dropping gently uh, uh, the packages uh, to the ground. Uh, you'll just have some time to accept the delivery. Of course, the drone is in the air. It's using the batteries, so it cannot wait for you for half an hour above you. You'll have to accept, otherwise it will return home with the, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the facility with the uh, uh, goods on board. And here we can see the, uh, both Google and Amazon way of doing that. So Google, in one of their drones, uh, they're dropping it on a wire. 
on the Amazon drone that they've just landed and released a package. That was a great publicity stunt, but no one will ever land a drone near a consumer. It's, it's just not going to happen. So once you take it, you've got your product and you're very happy. But until we reach that space, that stage, we've got a lot of progress to make. It starts with changing our skies. As you well aware, uh, you, are, you probably know, uh, drones are not flying above us that, that regularly. Uh, the regulators are really, really focused on, on making sure that the skies are, will stay safe. Uh, this is how it might look from a few years from now. You'll have, of course, the, uh, uh, the altitude that above it only airplanes and helicopters and manned man flights will fly. But below that, you'll have areas where drones can fly autonomously. And these are two separate systems. On the top level, you've got people monitoring everything in, in real time. We're talking about 747s, about helicopters. But on the lower altitudes, there'll be too many drones to, to control manually. You'll need an automated system. So the, automat the air traffic control will continue to look like this with the manned person uh, watching over the skies. But the drones will have to fly completely autonomous. Now, we at uh, Flytrex believe that a drone should be as simple as possible. Uh, we've got companies working on visual uh, uh, computer, uh, computerized uh, uh, vision, things like that. We believe that all the smartness of the drone should come from the uh, cloud system. Uh, we can store uh, weather information. We can store uh, uh, topography. We can store man-made objects. Everything, uh, other drones flying around. We can store all that data on our servers and inform the, or send a command to the drone in real time uh, to fly from point A to point B after making a decision on the cloud system. So the drone can be relatively simple. And if we uh, receive new information, we can send it a command to the drone in real time. Let's say that the, uh, there's a fire going on and the air traffic control is now closing uh, in the airspace around that fire to allow airplanes to approach and, and mitigate the fire. So in an in instant, all of our drones will fly outside of that area because they're cloud connected. We've already started working on this. We call it the Flytrex uh, Awareness uh, uh, Program. We're already aware of, of topography. So when you purchase our drone online today, it's for consumers, not for businesses. It actually alerts you if you're trying to set a, distance, a, a, a path in a lower altitude than what we recommend. And it's based on studying the topography of your flight path. We are also missing a lot of safety procedures. Uh, when you board your, your uh, commercial airplane today, uh, the, the chances of something falling apart or, 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 or failing miserably is 10 to the power of minus 7 to min uh, 10 to the power of 7 or 10 to the power of, of 9, like between 10 million and a billion to 1. Uh, that's because we have 100 years of, of, of aviation behind us. And we're going to see that uh, being done on drones as well. Uh, it's going to take tens, if not hundreds of thousands of flights uh, above other areas before any regulator will allow a drone to fly over London. Uh, so we have to uh, push up safety as well when it comes to drones, to unmanned drones. And we also have to push technology. Uh, today, the, the drone that we're selling online uh, can send, let's say, a, a soda can to eight kilometers away and come back. So if you'll send it from the center of London, you can probably cover pretty much the, uh, the greater area of, of London. Uh, but when you look up to the distance, uh, to the future, we'll want to see drones shipping things even further than that. And there's a huge distance between eight kilometers to almost 600 kilometers between uh, LA and San Francisco, for, for an example. Uh, so technology will have to adapt as well, uh, moving from simpler drones into drones that can take off and land uh, vertically, but they'll have fixed wings, allowing them to uh, uh, pass much more a distance with the same batteries. And of course, there's the uh, last meter problem. Uh, all those images that you see and videos of drones landing, that's very nice, but in a dense urban environment, it's going to be a much harder problem to solve. And we see two solutions coming up. One is for the, uh, for the uh, next few years, 
and the next solution would be for, for 10, 20 years from now. Now, the, uh, what we'll see in the next few years is places marked by the municipality or by private people as suggested landing spots or drop points. Uh, that way you will be able to, uh, 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 to send a drone to a location which is nearby you. It won't be to your rooftop. It will never be to your window. It's too risky. If you talk about uh, skyscrapers, the wind is too, too strong and uh, not, not uh, anticipated. So if you approach the window, most chances are that you'll crash. Also, there's bad GPS reception when you approach a building. So you won't see a drone approaching your window, giving you your, uh, your flowers or your iPad. You will see it landing on your rooftop. You will see it landing on a designated area, like a car parking spot uh, next to your house, or maybe in a, in a certain place in a large park, in a large open park. Uh, that's what we'll see in the next few years. And we're also already working on projects in the developing world where those solutions will, 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 uh, uh, will happen. Uh, a year from now, we're going to see a project in Africa where a drone drops medical supplies in designated areas in an urban environment. So the future is closer than what you expect, but in different locations. Uh, 20 years from now, you know, 100 years ago, nobody uh, wanted a, a garage for his car. But today, when you build a house, when you build a skyscraper, you've got lots of parking spaces for, for cars. And as, we do, we'll, as drones will progress, you'll see specific areas built for drone landings or drone droppings on top of new buildings. Uh, it will take time, uh, not less than 10 or 15 years. Uh, but drones are here to stay. I'll say even something, drones will hit people. Uh, there's no going way around it. Uh, we'll have lots of safety measures. We'll have lots of regulations. But drones will hit people the same way that cars hit people. And airplanes, God forbid, crash from time to time. But with every new technology, we, we understand what that technology can do for us, and we embrace it at the end. Uh, thank you so much. So, Yariv, um, the drone space is already getting quite commodified. Lots of people are on Kickstarter with the drone they've made. Um, how do you see Flytrex adding value and becoming a business? So, uh, we're actually a platform. When I'm selling a drone, I'm selling a lot of technology that stands behind that platform. Um, that way we can empower other partners, manufacturers, uh, to use our awareness program. Uh, you can just build your own drone, sell it on Kickstarter, and with a little box that will add to your drone, your drone will suddenly be aware. Uh, your drone will be able to be, uh, you'll be able to control your drone from a server on the other, other side of the planet. So it's more than just selling a drone, it's empowering a whole ecosystem that currently does not exist. So you're working out of Israel, but presumably you're having to think about the international markets. Regulation is going to be a challenge market by market. Is there anywhere at the moment where you think it would be a good place to start? So we've already started uh, talking with a few potential uh, commercial clients all over the world. And each zone has its own problem. We, we have a few projects in Africa, in a certain state. And the aviation authority's main concern is that someone will hijack the drone and will try to kill their president. So that's their main concern. In Israel, when we spoke with the, uh, with the authorities in Israel, they told us that it's going to be easier for them uh, to approve an urban environment test than an, a suburb test, because the Air Force controls most of the skies except for above the cities. So I won't have to receive the permit from the Air Force, only from the Aerospace Authority. So each area has its own problems or its own uh, demands. We'll probably see the, the first real commercial projects where you'll see drones flying, sending goods to people in Africa and in Eastern Europe. These are... Uh, so for some of the retailers it. in the room, how many years before you will be clicking on the Burberry website and the drone will then deliver? Well, if I'm code. optimistic, if you're talking about the greater area of London, if I'm really optimistic, it's five years. If I'm more realistic, it will be uh, about seven to ten years, or even a bit more. It's, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I have to be optimistic. Otherwise, I'd be sitting back at home doing something else. Uh, it was the same with SpaceAL. When we started building a spacecraft, 
back at the end of 2010, we were sure that in two years we land on the moon. Uh, right now it's uh, by the end of 2017. So here I'm trying to be a bit more realistic and say that between five to ten years we'll see drones flying above our heads. So the Israeli space program that you're involved with is thinking it could get to the moon within a couple of years? By two years. We've already started manufacturing everything. Do you have an e-commerce model? <laughs> well, every kilo, if you'd like to send a kilo to the moon, the price tag would be roughly between one to five million dollars per, per kilo. So you need a really good reason to send uh, anything of commercial value to, to the moon. Just make sure your guys are watching for Uber chasing <laughs> behind you. Thank you, Yarif Bash. Thank you. Thank you.